So Eagle Dynamics has dropped the first patch to include improved multi-threading support. Are the performance gains real, or is it all hype? I ran a test to try and find out. I joined the Aerobatics online multiplayer server and ran through the damn loop race course in a Viper. I recorded that live, then I exited the game, loaded back in to watch the replay in DCS multi-threaded mode, then I exited the game and watched the exact same replay again in single-threaded mode. If we compare the multi-threaded replay to the single-threaded replay, this is about as close as we can get to an apples-to-apples -apples comparison to see how multi-threading is impacting our performance. DCS is hard to benchmark. There's always an element of randomness, even when you watch a replay, but this is about as scientific as I think I'm going to be able to manage. So what you're seeing on the right is the live version. What you're seeing in the middle is the multi-threaded replay and then on the left side it's the single threaded replay and I got this video synced up really uh, pretty well so at any point in the video you can pause it and see how the numbers compare but what's interesting to look at here is what's coming from MSI Afterburner you can see the GPU usage and the CPU usage and you can see pretty clearly in the single threaded replay as you watch this that the CPU usage is lower, meaning there's less cores that are activated, and this is pretty typical. Uh, I I rarely ever saw more than uh, 25, you know, you know, 25, 30 percent utilization when I'm playing DCS, uh, no matter what's going on. But you can see clearly in both the live and uh, and the uh, replay version of multi-threaded that it's into the 40s which is you know it's it's almost that's not quite double but it's definitely utilizing that cpu a little bit more and for the gpu graph what you're looking for there is you don't want to see big dips uh, you'll see this a little bit later in the video and i'll point it out when we get there but if the gpu is being sufficiently fed you want that to, to be pegged at uh, you know around 100% and you don't want to see big dips you don't want to see uh, frequent dips now that stuff in the beginning where the GPU uh, is dipped down that's just because you know the mission was loading uh, and that's when I started the benchmark software so you see that across the board now the new display uh, the the FPS display is different for the multi-threaded version they added a nice indicator to say if you were gpu bound or if you're cpu bound for this test i want to be gpu bound that's good that means you're getting the most frames that your gpu could possibly give you and that's good that means the multi-threading is doing its thing if it ever goes to cpu bound that's bad that means that the cpu is now overloaded and if not for you know game engine inefficiencies you would be seeing higher frames. Now the frame rates for the single threaded, you're not noticing a dramatic difference here. Um, but again, it does say that I am GPU bound. Uh, but even so, it is slightly better on the multi-threaded replay versus the single threaded, consistently, a little bit better. And that's good. And when we get into situations uh, a little bit later on, uh, you can see this. Look at this right here. This is an important uh, part. So we've just seen a big dip on the graph in the single threaded replay. You see that big dip. But if you look at the multi threaded re and the multi threaded live, even, the dips are not that deep and they don't last that long. So you're getting a more consistent frame rate. And that's what you want to see. And around this point in the video, we start to get a little less GPU loaded because the terrain's easier to load. Uh, we're getting into a part of the map that's not so difficult. And you can see the FPS is, is jumping into the, the 120s. It jumps up there a little bit. But for the single threaded, we are staying in the high 90s, barely jumping up to 100. So that's, that's a significant difference there as well. What I was impressed by when I was watching this side by side for the first time is that the multi-threaded replay and the multi-threaded live frame rates are so consistent with each other.
And as we exit the dam loop and start to climb to altitude, the GPU becomes a little bit less of a factor. And you'll see the frame rates spike, and they spike higher for the multi-threaded than they do for the single. And this is where you can start to extrapolate that if I had a more powerful GPU, the gains I would see would likely be more significant. So I'm running a RX 6700 XT uh, Radeon card, and it's you know I would say that that's that's like upper mid, uh, and my CPU has eight cores, sixteen threads, uh, and there's still a lot of power CPU power left that could be leveraged. So I feel like this is a good sign going forward that uh, if these are the kinds of improvements we expect from their first cut, that their their next one should be incrementally better. So I think this is uh, the sign of good things. So my conclusion is that uh, it's not all hype. Uh, the performance gains are real. How much you will see depends on your system, you know, and the mission, a lot of other factors. As usual, things with DCS are complicated, but it's not all hype. It is real. And uh, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my uh, personal results. And I will see you next time.